Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the Enroute wind chart. By the end of the video you will know how to read this type of charts and you will understand why do we use them during the flight preparation. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1 rotates. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from pilotclimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel and if you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video because this really helps the channel to grow. So too much talking, let's see what are these en route wind charts, okay? In this chart, you will get the information regarding the wind, the intensity of the wind, the direction of the wind and the temperature of the atmosphere or that part of the atmosphere at that specific level, okay? We have this uh, en route wind chart for a specific part of, of the world, okay, which could be Europe, for example, which could be America, for example, and then you have this chart for different layers, okay, depending on your flight operations, okay, depending if you're an airliner jet, you want to check this chart for your cruise, for example, okay, let's say flight level 350, okay, that's the chart that you want to check. And if you're flying lower, you want to check this chart, for example, for level 60. So depending on your flight level, depending on your cruise level, you want to check the significant, well, the significant uh, this en route wind chart, okay? The difference between this en route wind chart and the significant weather chart is that on the significant weather chart, you get all the significant weather such as, as thunderstorms, jet streams, such as uh, volcanic ash, for example. And I made a separate video where I analyzed the significant weather chart. However, with this en route wind chart, you only get the wind direction, the wind intensity and the temperature at that specific level. Okay, so it is very important that you check that. Why? It's because if you are flying from, one, from point A to point B, you want to make sure that you keep your wind direction and intensity under control because if one day you have a strong headwind and you have to fly a long flight, that may have a big implication of, on your fuel consumption. Okay. So let's jump right into the whiteboard and let's analyze one of these en route wind charts. Okay guys, as you can see from the whiteboard in here, we've got the en route we uh, wind chart, okay? First of all, this wind chart is being generated by Aero Weather and that's their website. And I took this we uh, wind chart from this website in here, www.spilve.lv. So check that. Check those website, this website to get this wind chart, okay? The credit goes to them. All right, so let's try to analyze and understand what are these arrows, what are these uh, lines, these triangles and so on, okay? So, first of all, we've got this box in here, as usual, on a weather chart, in this case, a root wind chart, and let's analyze what this, this box is trying to tell us, okay? So, first of all, issued by WAFC, WFAFC London. What does it mean? It means that this chart has been issued by the World Area Forecast Center of London. If you don't know what these World Area Forecast Centers are, you just need to understand that these are two centers. We've got one in London, the other one in Washington, and their responsibility is to observe the weather and broadcast weather forecasts, okay? They make as well a significant weather chart that I made a separate video, and then they may as well, this, they do this en route wind chart as well, okay? So what it's saying, it's saying basically is that this wind chart has been done by the World Area Forecast Center of London. All right, so we've got wind and temperature, that's okay. Then we have flight level 300, so we know that this chart is applicable to flight level 300. So if you are flying with a Cessna 172, you don't, you don't take this chart, you will take a lower uh, chart, for, for example, the, the chart where in here, uh, instead of flight level 300, you should have flight level 60, for example, 50, whatever it is, okay? Then it says valid, so the, it's valid, it is midnight UTC on the 1st of October 2021, okay? And it's based on the observation that has been made on the 00 UTC data on the 30th of September 2021. So on the 30th of September 2021, they made the observation. And based on that observation, they forecast this wind, which is valid from 00 UTC on the 1st of October 21, okay? So then it says... Units used, not degrees Celsius. So the wind intensity is in knots and the temperature is in degrees Celsius. Then it says temperature negative unless prefixed by plus. So all the temperature informations are negative unless is a, there is a plus. Okay, so let's try to analyze all this information here. 
So first of all, this chart, guys, takes the eurozone pretty much, okay? This is North Africa in here, but this is Spain, this is France, this is Italy, UK, Ireland, and so on, okay? So I hope you locate yourself in this chart, okay? So what we've got, let's take one of these informations because, guys, these uh, lines and triangles, they are all the same. Once you know how to read one of these uh, information in here, like, for example, this one, okay, once you know how to read that one, you will be able to read all of them. Okay, so let's take that one as an example. So this one has got a very long line, okay, this line there, then has got a number in there, 38, and then has got three other smaller lines, okay, one, two, and three, okay? So first of all, what I suggest you to do is when you look at this chart, in order not to make a mistake on the wind direction, put an arrow in there, okay, or imagine an arrow. So the arrow should go something like that in there, okay? So what does it mean? Is that the wind is blowing in this direction, okay? That's the direction of the wind, okay? So if you look at another, another example, like, let's say this one, the wind, if I put an arrow there, that means that the wind is blowing, that's the wind direction, okay? So, and if you look closely to the chart, guys, we've got this dashed line in, the, in here, okay? These black ones are the meridians and these uh, uh, horizontal, let's call, it, let's call them like that, horizontal, these are the parallels, okay? So as you can see, in this case, this wind, okay, has got a true direction of uh, zero, zero, zero. So it's coming from north. So this is a northly wind, okay? And the intention, the intention of the wind, the intensity of the wind, I will tell you in a second how to read that, okay? So first of all, that's the intensity. The, the biggest line is the intensity. And then you have got these uh, big lines in there, okay? And as you can see from other examples, we might have as well triangles, and we might even have, look at this. We've got a triangle, then we have two, uh, big lines and then one half line. Okay, what does it mean? So that triangle, if you've got a triangle in there, that means 50 knots. And this is the wind intensity. A long line means 10 knots, all right? And an half line means 5 knots, okay? So in this example, the example that we are making, since we have three long lines, that means that this is a 30 knots wind. Okay, so if you look at, and in this other example in here, okay, this one, okay, guys, this example in there, we've got a triangle, we've got a long line, and then a small line. What does it mean is that the triangle means 50, the big line means 10, and the small line means 5. So in this wind in here is 65 knots of wind, okay? So, guys, as you can see, look at this example in here as well. Look, if you look at this example, the wind is coming from that direction and has got an intensity of 50 plus 50 plus 10. So that means 110 knots, okay? So this is the intensity. It, it's really, um, the intensity, you can only, all, uh, all, only see the triangle, the big line, and the small line. So you only need to add them up, okay? So in this case, you've got lots of lines, okay? We've got four big line and then a triangle, in this case it's 50 plus 10, 10, 10, and 10, that means 90, okay? So beautiful. Then we've got this number in here, guys, 38, like in this case, 38, 38 in there. And as we read at the beginning, the temperature are negative unless pre prefixed by plus. So that means that the temperature is minus 38. In this position, the temperature is minus 38 and the wind has got a, uh, an intensity of 30 knots, okay? So, now, I want you to look closely uh, uh, at the chart, okay? Look at the chart in here. So, as you can see, guys, in this area, the wind is quite okay. It's very low wind. Look at this. In this case, we've, in this case, we've got a wind that's coming from around 330 degrees, intensity 10 knots only. In this case, the wind is shifting around because the wind now is a southerly wind, let's say 200 degrees at 10 knots. In this case, is a, a westerly wind, okay, from 270 pretty much at 5 knots, okay. So this area, as you can see, is a low wind in, uh, area. But look at this area in here, look. This area in here, guys, is a completely different story because you've got actually in here, look at this corridor in here, in this area, guys, you've got winds that goes 100 knots, 110 knots, 100 knots, 
105 knots, 100 knots, and so on as well, the same in here. And then the that direction is pretty much the same, okay, guys? So as you can see, in this area in here, we've got a big corridor of wind, very strong wind that is blowing in that direction. So why it is important is because if you're flying from, let's say, from France, somewhere you fly to Iceland for example you are going to go into that direction and you want to avoid that corridor you want to go slightly to the left or slightly to the right because 110, 150, 100, 115, 120 knots of heading will really make a big difference in your fuel consumption okay and that's why it is very important to check these charts okay so for example at the moment I'm based in Tenerife okay I lived in Tenerife which is this island down there and I want to fly to Sardinia where I'm from, okay? If I fly like that, I know already that the wind is very low. So you, you see you've got 15 knots in there, five knots tailwind in there, then it shift a little bit of uh, crosswind by five knots, and then we've got 30 knots cross. So the wind is pretty much zero. I don't have any headwind component nor a tailwind component. So the wind is actually, you can disregard almost the wind at flight level 300, okay? But this, the, the, the situation changes if you're flying in this, in this region in here okay you see you've got 110 knots uh, 100 knots 100 knots. and if you fly like that okay in the opposite direction that really makes a big difference okay because that flight level is always the same this is all about flight level 300 so as you can see depending on where you are in that region you might have a big difference on the wind okay guys so i hope you enjoy this video about uh, the en route wind chart if you have any questions leave a comment below and then i will help you out also go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content i wish you a great day and i'll see you in the next one